In this video, I'm going to talk about average rate of change. Okay, so we're going to start pretty simple and we'll do several examples. So the first example, f of x equals 4. So if I were to graph this, I just have a flat horizontal line that passes through y equals 4. Okay, so when we're talking about average rate of change, we're kind of talking about slope a little bit. So for linear functions or for lines, the slope is going to be constant no matter where we look. So if we're talking about the interval from 1 to 3, we can make a couple of ordered pairs out of this. So 1 and 3. And we'll get ordered pairs here. So 1 is 4, and 3 is, well, 4, right? Because every y value is 4. So then the average rate of change over this interval is simply going to be the slope between these two points. So our slope is going to be the change in y over the change in x. So the y is 4 minus 4, and the x is 3 minus 1. So it looks like 0 over 2, which is 0 for my slope, and that's going to be my average rate of change. So what this means is that from 1, 4 to 3, 4, the change is 0, because we're not going up, we're not going down. Actually, for this constant function, we're not doing much of anything. So this is probably the most basic average rate of change problem, and it's almost so easy it can be confusing, where it's just going to be a constant, y equals 4, and it has no change at all whatsoever. In this second example, we have the function g of x equals 3x minus 2. So when you graph this, it's just going to be a really nice linear function. So we care about it from 0 to 3, so from 0 here down here, over to 3 up here. So if we draw a line here between those two points, well... It's actually just a line. So we can grab points at 0 and 3 for x values. So let's plug them in. 0 times 3 is 0 minus 2. So my y value is negative 2 right here. When I plug 3 in, 3 times 3 is 9, minus 2 is 7. So 3 and up to 7 up here. So we have our two ordered pairs. So the slope is going to be the change in y over the change in x. So 7 minus a negative 2 over 3 minus 0. So 9 over 3, which equals 3 for our slope. Well, that's interesting because the average rate of change is 3. But if I look at this, my slope right here is 3 also because we have it in y equals mx plus b form, which is slope intercept. So there's my 3. So the first example we did was just a horizontal line with no change whatsoever. The second one was degree 1, so it's a linear function. So it's just going to have a constant change over its entire domain, which is just 3 in this case. This third example is not going to be just as easy as a straight line with the constant rate of change. But instead, we're going to have a square root function, and the interval that we care about is from 4 to 9. So let's take a look at what that square root function is going to look like. Okay, so we notice it kind of took the look right here, it kind of does this thing right there, a square root function. And we can have maybe 4 over here and 9 over here. And here we could say like 2, and up here we'd say like 3, something like that. So there's some curvature to our function, it's not just a straight line. So we want to know, if we were to draw a straight line, which we call the secant line, which kind of is hard to tell because the curvature is very slight, um, then we can find the average rate of change on the secant line. So let's uh, find ordered pairs. 4 is 2, because the square root of 4 is 2, and 9 is 3. So we have 4, 2, and 9, 3. So if we want to find that average rate of change, we need to find the slope, which is the change in y over the change in x. So 3 minus 2 over 9 minus 4 is 1 fifth for our average rate of change. So even though we have a very slight curvature here, and it's very hard to tell with a straight line or our secant line here, we can nonetheless draw a secant line, and its endpoints are given at 4 and 9, which are intervals here, and we can find the slope of that secant line is going to be 1 fifth. So that's going to be our average rate of change for the square root function between 4 and 9. In this fourth example, we have a new function, f of x equals, and we have this x minus 1 quantity cubed minus 2. 
And we care about it from 1 to 2 is our interval here. So let's take a look at the graph. Okay, so you'll see on that graph that we have points 1 and 2, the ends are the intervals. So when we plug 1 in, we get 1 minus 1 is 0 cubed, so 0 minus 2 is negative 2. And we can plug in 2, 2 minus 1 is 1, cubed is 1, minus 2 is negative 1. So we have our two endpoints, 1, negative 2, and 2, negative 1. And we want to know what the average rate of change is. So what's the slope between those two points? So again, change of y over change in x. So it'll be negative 1 minus a negative 2, and then 2 minus 1. So this will go swoosh, swoosh. So negative 1 plus 2 is 1. 2 minus 1 is 1. So actually, our average rate of change between there is 1. So you notice it kind of had that curvature to it, but from here to here it was straight. So the slope here is just 1, even though we have that curve. So down here it's growing slowly, and as it goes, it grows a little more quickly and quickly and quickly. So that's our fourth example here with our average rate of change. The secant line's slope is going to be E equals 1. In our fifth and final example here, we have the function sine of x minus pi, and we're going to go from pi over 2 to 2 pi. So just like we've been doing, go ahead and take a look at the graph real quick. So on the graph, you notice there are two points, and uh, one of the x values was pi over 2, and the other x value was 2 pi. So I'm not sure if you could see that. 2 pi was at 0, though. Also, when we plug in 2 pi, we can see 2 pi minus pi is 1 pi, and sine of 1 pi is 0. You can also plug in pi over 2. So pi over 2 minus pi is a negative pi over 2, which sine of that is going to be negative 1. So we have our endpoints, and we can draw a secant line between those two endpoints. And then we can find the slope of that secant line, which will give us our average rate of change. So the change of our y's is 0 minus a negative 1 over 2 pi minus pi over 2. Well, the top's pretty easy. There's going to be 1. Our bottom is 2 pi minus half pi, so you could put that over 1. We multiply the top and bottom, so it'll be 4 over 2 minus 1 over 2 will be 3 pi over 2. But then it's 1 over that, so we need the reciprocal. So it'll be 2 over 3 pi will be my slope right there. Oh, right there. 2 over 3 pi will be my slope. Okay, so if we come back over here, so we knew our slope was 2 over 3 pi. This is going to be our average rate of change. I know it's kind of a goofy thing right here, 2 over 3 pi, but that's the slope of that secant line that you saw in the graph. So for average rate of change, we're just going to find the secant line, which has endpoints at our given interval. So in this case, it was pi over 2 and 2 pi. And you're just going to find the slope of that secant line. That's going to be an average rate of change, uh, which kind of is a very general term and a general sense of what the change is doing. Definitely not at any in particular point, but kind of over the whole interval. So there's average rate of change.